Want a place where your child can get excited about learning about God? Children's Ministry at Good Hope is a place where your child will be taught to love God, love all people, and change the world through age-appropriate activities, interactive worship, sports, music, and art. Through our Gospel Project Sunday Worship, weekly Awana Bible Clubs, Upward Sports League, and Summer Vacation Bible School, your child will be ministered to year-round. Remember, your child is a gift from God. When we hear the word freedom, most of us think of being free from something. But in our message today, I want to encourage you to know what you are free to become. I'm Dr. DZ Kofi, a senior pastor of the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and I want to welcome you to this edition of Word of Hope Ministries. There's no question that when you hear the word freedom, freedom refers to being released from something. And when we experience our freedom in Christ, we are free from the penalty of sin in terms of death, and we have the opportunity to be freed from the power of sin over our lives in terms of our day-to-day -day walk with God. But what the Apostle Paul and Jesus want you to know today is that you are not just free from some things. I want you to know today that you are free to do some things. You see, when I am shackled and I am in chains, I am in bondage. And if somebody came and they took those handcuffs off of me, I would be set free from what had me bound. But now what am I going to do? And the scripture challenges us, not just to recognize our freedom from, but our freedom to, to live a life that is pleasing to God, that will bring glory and honor to him. Today, I want you to join me in celebrating what you are free to do, not just free from, but what you are free to do. Let's, let's get to our message. Hebrews 2, 14, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. See, that's why the believer, the child of God, is not afraid of death. Because death has no power over us. That's why the Apostle Paul said in the book of Philippians, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm in a win-win situation. If I live, I can live to his glory. If I die, I go to be with him. If you ask me to stay, I'm only staying for your sake, not for my sake, because I'm better off with him than I am staying here with you. You don't want me to leave, but that's only because you don't know what's on the other side. He says, we're free from the bondage of death. But watch the last thing. Maybe the most important. I don't know. See, free to live your life to the fullest and do right. You have been freed to live your life to the fullest and do right. 
You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, here's the challenge that Paul has to deal with. People took freedom from the law and used it as a license to do wrong. Now, as a slave to sin, they sinned. But under grace, they believe they can sin without the consequences eternally of their sinning. So they use the freedom that Christ gave as a license to do wrong. And Paul says, why would you waste the freedom that Christ gave you to behave in the same way that you did when you was a slave to sin? Like, you didn't need grace to sin. You were already sinning. You not only sinned, you were practicing your sin. You were attempting to become proficient in your sin. Now that you came to Christ, why would you bring sin into your walk with God when God has now given you the power to no longer walk in sin, but to walk in life? God has now given you the opportunity to fulfill your potential in him and to live above where you have lived previously but you're still trying to get away with the stuff that you've done in the past in Jesus' name. Love, joy, peace, satisfaction, hope, all of those things God says are available to you now. And you can have them for real and not just pretend you have them. You know, like when we come around other people, and guilt is beating us up, but we're pretending like we don't have guilt. Or shame has us feeling low, so we'll overdress to try to compensate for the low feelings that we have internally. Or we try to exchange our net worth for our self-worth. And so if we can wear the right clothes, and drive the right car and live in the right neighborhood, you will be duped in the thinking that we are really blessed by God. Even though I can be in a five-bedroom house with a king-size bed and not get a good night's sleep because I am miserable in my walk with God. Look at Psalm 119, verse 45. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. I want you to underline that phrase, walk in freedom. Um, the ESV translation of the Bible says, and I shall walk in a wide place. Unrestricted, unconstricted. I will walk in a wide place and enjoy the blessings of God. Let's read Proverbs 4.12 together. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. You see, when you walk in the freedom that God has given you, you not only access the power of God, but you put yourself in position to be aligned with God. So when the enemy comes against you, you can stand on the promise that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's, because you are walking and living in his truth in representation of his name. Luke 1, says, Praise to the Lord God of Israel. He has come to help his people and has given them freedom. Now you say, I'm free, so that means I can do whatever I want to do. And you can. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Because you have to think about your testimony. You have to think about your representation of God. And you have to think about the effect it will have on others who are less mature than you are. 1 Corinthians 8, 9, but you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. Um, can I go to a bar and hang out? Sure, there's nothing in the Bible that says I can't go to a bar. You might see me in a bar 
I might be in there witnessing. You automatically assume I'm in there for the same reason you in there. <laughs> or else how you know I was in there. And if you say somebody told me, now you gossiping. That's a whole nother issue. But is that the best place for me to be? And if you don't think that's the best place for me to be as your leader, why do you think that's the best place for you to be as a follower? Kind of reminds me, to, I, I, I got to the church, I just got here, just got here, and so I'm trying to go to every social event I can. I want to meet as many people as I can, and one of the members had her 50th birthday party, so she invited her new pastor to come to a 50th birthday party, and they had a party over in the Rose Garden over at, at Herman Park, and so we go over there to the Rose Garden. She's having a 50th birthday party, and as would be the case, uh, several of the people started playing some cards. They were playing spades. Now, I'm not saying I'm a good card player. I'm just saying I keep a one-way ticket to Boston for anybody who needs to go. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I keep a one-way ticket. Open-ended. Sign it over to whoever needs it. Some of y'all looking like, what that means? Just ask the person who's laughing. Anyway. Now, I enjoy playing cards, but I wasn't going to play cards, right? Because I just got to the church. I didn't, you know, hey, I'm just trying to feel my way. So I walked over. I'm watching several of them. They're playing cards. And I'm just watching. And one of the ladies, she said, oh, hey, Reverend, how you doing? Congratulations on getting to church. Would you like to play with us? And one of our good faithful members who was sitting at the table, <laughs> as she was dealing, said, mm-mm, my pastor better not be playing no cards. <laughs> And I said, look at here. <laughs> now, I had no problem with it because I wasn't intending to play. But here's my point. If somebody would have stumbled because of the perception of a card game being linked to what Christians shouldn't do, I would have had to make a choice. Do I want to play and run that risk or just stay back and play online? <laughs> Y'all know I'm only being serious. Anyway, look at 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23 and 24. Let's read it together. You say I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Don't be concerned for your own good, but for the good of others. Let me put a quote in the meeting park here for a second. How many times do you get ready to do something? And somebody said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm grown. Well, you shouldn't be doing They should be minding their business. Why are they watching me? They need to be taking care of their own business. But are you responsible for your witness? See, when we talk about your time, talent, your temple, your treasure, and your testimony, your testimony is not what you say about God. Your testimony is what God would say about you. You remember when God, after Satan was walking to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, said to the devil, have you checked out my servant Job? Job had a testimony. Not based on what he would say about himself, but based on what God said about him. And what would be God's testimony about you? You must be concerned about more than just what you want and your feelings. You've got to learn how to be concerned for others to make sure that your behavior is edifying to others. Galatians 5.1, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery 
to the law. Can we just put, don't get tied up again in slavery to and just leave it blank. You fill in the blank. You know, like when you're in bondage in a relationship and you're praying and asking the Lord to get you out and then the Lord gets you out and then you decide to go back into that sl slavery relationship. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? And you have become so codependent. You have learned how to cope so well that you rather have a bad relationship than to live in the realm of a possibility of a blessed relationship. Matter of fact, you sit there, and, and here's what I love when folks say something like this. They'll say, hey, yeah, see, you, you don't understand. I, I know what I have. I ain't trying to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. I may go into something worse. Listen, I can guarantee you, guarantee that if you leave a bad relationship, you can go into a good one in your next relationship. I can guarantee it right now, 100%. You know how to go into a good relationship after you leave a bad one? Stay by yourself. If you can't get along with you, why you expect somebody else to be able to get along with you? And if you don't like you enough to be by yourself, why somebody else likes you enough to be with you? Be by yourself. There is no requirement to be with somebody in your life. Verse 13, Galatians 5. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16 together. Live as people who are free, not using freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Y'all sound so good. Let's read the last verse together. Colossians 1, verses 9 and 10. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Verse 10 should be the goal for everybody's life in here. That we live in a way that honors and pleases God. That our lives produce every kind of good fruit. And that we grow as we learn to know God better and better. Live out the freedom that God has blessed you with. Don't choose to be a slave when God has declared you are free. Father, we bless you today, and we thank you for your word. And I pray now, God, that everybody, having heard your word, will not just be a hearer, but they would be a doer as well. Help somebody, God, who may have fallen repeatedly because they have tried to live freedom, but not by your spirit, but by their flesh. And you've told us in your word, God, that while the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. God, when we walk in the spirit, we tap into a supernatural source of power to help us to do what you've called us to do and help us become who and what you want us to be. And so I pray now that we would walk in that power in how we interact with each other, in our homes, on our jobs, in our fellowships, how we relate to you, and even how we perceive ourselves. Help us to walk in that power so that we can truly say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. Free from the pain free from the burdens, 
free from the guilt and shame, not when we get to heaven, but in our walk on earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, you have been set free. Don't live your life in bondage to sin any longer. You have been set free from the power of sin to rule and reign over your life. But later on, he says, make sure you use that freedom in the right way. You have been set free. So don't use your freedom now to do wrong. Don't sit there and say, oh, well, you know what? If I've been saved by grace, man, that means I can go out and sin even more. While you can, here's what I would encourage you to understand. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Why? Because while you may be free to do the act, you will not be free from experiencing the consequences of your sin, especially when you have an angry father called God who is looking at you and will chastise you because of your sin. God wants you to understand that you have been freed to live your life to the fullest. For many people right now, somebody who's watching, I'm talking about you. The reason you are not living your life to the fullest is not because God has not set you free and it's not because you don't have the opportunity. You are living with a self-imposed straitjacket on. You have literally handcuffed yourself and thrown the keys away. You have bound yourself. What's holding you back? What's keeping you? Stop blaming other people for not walking in the freedom that God has provided for you. Somebody who's listening right now, you're in bondage. You're in freedom. You're in bondage. You're in freedom. God says, wait a minute, why do you keep on going back and forth? Are you in bondage or are you in freedom? Well, in Christ, I'm free. But you're still living like you're in bondage. What are you free to do? Somebody, listen, you've always dreamed about going back to school. You're free to go to school. I don't care what anybody has said. I don't care what anybody has done. You're free to do it. Uh, get a promotion on your job. <laughs> you're free. You are free to do that. Study, prepare yourself, take that exam, take that test, walk in the freedom. You're free to be great. You don't have to accept mediocrity for your life any longer. You are free to be great. God has set you free. You are free. He dubs you free. So stop walking around with a slave mentality. You see, when you are set free, what's most important is not so much the body being set free as much as the mind and spirit being set free. And there's somebody in here right now, somebody who's watching right now, you need to understand God has set you free. He has set you free to fulfill your potential in him. He has set you free to be the child of God that he wants you to be, to be the great Christian that he has called you to be, to be used in a mighty way in his work and in his service. He has set you free to do those things. So do it. Walk in the freedom that God has provided. You see, it's only when you walk in that freedom to fulfill your potential that you position yourself to hear the Lord say, well done. And that's the approving voice that you want to hear at the end of your journey. The Barbara Jordan International Preschool provides children from infancy to pre-kindergarten with a superior character building curriculum, nutritious meals, and a multi-language program. Can you imagine your child speaking Chinese and Spanish at the age of two? Invest in your child's future. Space is limited. For more information, call 832-217-3300 or go to pjipreschool.org. Barbara Jordan International Preschool, preparing children to change the world. Now, I want to close today by asking you a question. How can you better use and enjoy the freedom that God has provided for you? 
That's a question that you need to ask and answer if you really want to benefit from our message today. You see, God has provided the freedom. He makes it available. But remember what I said, freedom is conditional. In other words, it can be granted, but if you don't accept it and you don't make a determination to live out of it, then you might as well still be a slave. What good is freedom if you still gonna live like a slave? If you still have a slave mentality, you still live in a slave residence, and you have not been set free mentally. Now here's the beauty of our freedom in Christ. Our freedom in Christ is not dependent upon anybody else. This is between you and God. And if you believe that God has set you free, walk in that freedom. And anybody who wants to keep you in bondage is not of God. That is not God's plan for you. God wants you to walk in freedom. I wanna pray for you today that you walk in the freedom that God has provided for you. Father, today, you have said in your word, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God, I pray right now that those that you have set free, that they would walk in that freedom. And those who are in bondage who need you, I pray that they would come to know you so that those who need you would come to know you, those who know you would grow in you, and that they would all walk in the freedom that you have made available for those of us who know you in the pardon of our sins. God, you have set us free from death, the penalty of sin, and the power of sin to rule and reign over our lives, but you have set us free to walk in the newness of life. So help us to walk in the newness of life, to manifest the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. While gifts speak to our ability in the Spirit, fruit reveals our maturity. Help us to grow in you so that our lives would be pleasing in your sight. And we can truly say we are free at last. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good Hope would like to invite you to attend our Bible study Wednesday at noon, corporate prayer at 6.30 p.m. and Bible study at 7 p.m. Care is provided in the evening for children ages three years old to fifth grade. For more information, call us at 713-524-6578 or visit us online at goodhope.org. Dr. D.Z. Cofield explores pain in the raw. Man, those broken promises can be devastating. Dr. D.Z. Cofield digs in where others shy away. I mean, there's pe people right now who are grown, who still live with the scar of a broken promise of a dad who said, I'm gonna come pick you up. Watch Dr. D.Z. Cofield on The Cube, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. and Sundays at 6.30 a.m.